Our next presentation is about something that I think a lot of people don't spend enough time thinking about in the broadcast industry. If you, if you really boil it down, ancillary data, meaning things that are other than video and audio, are what drive the revenues for the vast majority of our businesses. We need to, uh, we need to have commercials, we need to have sponsor listings, we need to switch from uh, one program to another, we need time code, we need uh, metadata for information about uh, each one of these programs, and without that crucial data feed, all of those services, all of those financial streams go, go away. So Lee Whitcomb from Imagine Communications is going to talk about how ST2110 handles ancillary data, just like we've had other presentations about video and audio. And I think you'll really get a lot out of this presentation. So uh, go ahead, Lee. Good morning, everyone. So for anyone who was at my, my PTP talk yesterday, just to warn you, I asked the audience some questions, so you sort of have to listen. Now, yesterday I was the fourth presentation on PTP, so you could just listen to any of them and you could have fallen asleep through mine. Unfortunately, today I'm the first uh, angst presentation, so unfortunately you're going to have to stay awake. However, as a reward, the person who answers the question the best or asks me the best question at the end will get a universal adapter. So anyway, so the best question, so think, think of some hard questions for me or answer the question right. Okay, so auxiliary data. Um, so there's been lots of different things that go in the ANC space in SDI. So we have some of the, some of the things are very tightly coupled to the video. So it might be an AFD code which is tied to the video. You might have other essences that are sort of going along with, for the ride. So something like audio which is related but it's really a different essence stream. And then there's other signals which are sort of, I'll say, just along for the ride. There are things like maybe um, um, triggers and time code and other things. So in the ang space, there's a variety of different things that we sort of stuff in there. Now, because we have the 2110-30 for audio, as we move from SDI into IP, we don't want to use this new way of doing angst data for audio. So audio, you should use the audio way, the 2110-30, and not the 2110-40 for audio. So we have two different standards that are um, related in this. So there's an IATF standard, um, 8331, and it really says how to, how to put angst packets or into IP. So it's how to take your DID, SDID, SDI ANC data and put it into an IP packet. And then we have the 2110-40 uh, is how to put that stream and tie it together with 2110. And so both of these are relatively new. So the first one came out in February of this year and the SIMTI um, version uh, came out in April. So they're both relatively new. So one thing that as we move to these new standards, it actually adds some new capabilities we haven't had before. So where, we, where we're used to having audio breakaway, where I can take audio and route it separately and process it separately, we really didn't do that before with ANC data. Well, now we, can, now we have this capability. So when we have SDI, we used to, when we wanted to add closed caption, we'd have to take our video and take it through the closed caption encoder. You want to add the next service, we have to take our video signal and bring it over and through that other inserter. So every inserter you're going through, you're having to take all your video and audio signals through those inserters. As we now move to the IP-based method, we don't have to do that, which is nice. And then basically, well, I guess we'll see it on the next slide here. What we do then is only when we go to SDI, we take all those services and then, and that only at that last point do we re-embed and put everything back together. So kind of what this is looking like. So say I have a gateway product, I can take SDI in, I can break it into my essence flow. So this is one of the sort of key concepts of 2110 and how it say differs from 2022-6 is we're taking our SDI, which has our audio, our video, and our ANC services, and we're breaking them into separate streams. So we have our dash 20 for video, our dash 30 for audio, and then this talk here, dash 40 for ANC. But then what it allows us to do is we could have, say, a captioner, which is independently sending in that caption stream into the network. We could have our thing that wants to put downstream triggers. It's independently putting into the network. 
we could have our PTP generator, we want to generate uh, the um, time code. We have it independently put it into the network. So we can get all these different services into the network, and then only when we get to our final, say, gateway, it then picks and chooses from these different services, re-embeds that, and makes it SDI if we, if we need to go back to SDI. Also allows capabilities. So in the past, where I say if I was doing a, um, a converter going from 50 hertz to 59, and I'm going to want to convert from um, 708 captioning to OP47, you would normally do that in the same box. But as we move now to this IP base and this 2110.40 flow, what I can do is I can say have something that puts my, my 708 captioning into the network. I can have a caption processor that takes that stream in, converts it to OP47 or does something else with it, and puts it back into the network. So with this new method, we allow a lot more sort of capabilities and ways sort of new, new workflows can be uh, allowed. So if we look at the, um, the standard a bit more, so the, uh, so the RFC 41, sorry, 8331, this is what the, so the packet looks like. We, it's an RTP packet, so we have all the, sort of the RTP timestamps and that fun stuff. And then we basically have our, our DID, SDID, ANC services, and then you can have between zero up to, I think it's 256 in one packet. Um, for the software folks, when we were writing the standard, we tried to sort of word align a bunch of stuff so to make it easier either if, if you're doing a hardware implementation or a software implementation. So we were sort of keeping that in mind as we were writing the standard. So when you're putting the different services into these packets, there's sort of different choices you have. So you can put multiple services into one packet. So you can put a whole bunch of ANC packets or ANC services into one packet or you could put each service in a different packet if you want. You can put multiple stream, so you can put multiple services into the same stream, so they all have the same IP address. Or you could put each different service into a different stream. So now we get to the audience skill testing question. So why would I want to put different services in different streams? The, the, the things you want to think about is, in the IP world, each stream is your minimum routable unit. So if you want to basically be able to take this stream and route it to this device, so you're giving the example here of the different audio, putting different audio services. If you want to be able to route and process the English stream different than the French stream, then if they're in separate streams, you can do that. If you put them all in the same stream, if you then route the audio, if you, if you route the English stream, you'll get the French stream will go along with it. So really it comes down to you want to think about what is the minimum routable unit that you want to have. And that will sort of determine if you put a lot, of, a lot of different services in the same stream or do you put them in separate ones. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now on the downside, if you break everything into a separate stream, say you've got 100 videos and maybe each video has four different services, you now have 400 different ANC streams to manage when you create your databases and stuff. So it's kind of a trade-off of it. You've got, you increase some complexity by having more streams, but that gives you more flexibility in terms of the, in, the, the minimum routable unit you have. So there's sort of no right answer. You sort of need to think about for your application what makes the most sense. And that's really the power that comes from the 2110. So in SDI, everything was one stream, so you had one routable unit. You got the audio, the video, the angst, and all the angst services came as one bundle when you went to your router and switched it. With 211040, you can control. You can, I mean, you can still do the same if you want. You can put all your ANC services in one stream, so you can do it the same like you did in SDI, but it gives you that extra flexibility and power, so it allows you to do newer and better things. Okay, so we said we have the two standards. So we have the first one, which is basically says how we put our ANC services into a packet, and then sort of ask why do we have a SMPTE standard. So what it adds to it um, is there's information to say where, like in the packet, where to, which slide number to put this back in. It uh, has some sections in terms of how to, in the generation of SDI, um, the, how to use the RTP timestamps, so it has some additional um, normative language in terms of how the timestamps are created. Sort of, it ties it back to the 2110-10 and how it's tied to PTP, so there's a sort of a connection there. Um, there's a requirement that you have to send one packet per frame, which is kind of a keep-alive packet. And where this is very useful is that 
if say you weren't sending captioning for a while, a receiver doesn't know, I haven't received any packets, and that's because you didn't send any packets, or maybe the stream's gone away. So in terms of having that present, not present LED gets very challenging if you're not sending packets and you just don't know why. So we just have the requirement every so often you have to send a packet, just that way we know the stream is still active. Now you don't have to actually put any data, you can set the ANC number of ANC pack or the number of ANC services in that packet to zero, but at least you sort of have to send the header packet. And they're really tiny, so that's fine. And then there's the, also the STP. Um, does everyone know what, what STP is? From the yeah, so in, in, uh, in well, so STP is a, a, a concept that's been around, and it's a session description protocol. It's been around for many different industries. It's very important as part of 2110 family of standards because we need to sort of um, describe the stream. So you want to receive it, say, say from the case of video, for instance, you need to know what's the video format, is it 422, the color space and stuff. And so we use this STP to describe the streams. And that's also what the, the Dash 40 document does. Actually, one question I forgot to ask right at the beginning. How many people are sort of actively trying to make a facility right now and trying to use this? So we got a couple, OK. And then I guess, is everyone else just trying to learn a bit more about what's coming here? OK. OK, yeah, so we have the two standards, and they sort of each cover, cover different stuff. Now, this standard is quite small, and it's, it's, it's an eight-page eight document and only two pages are normative. So all the other pages are the introduction and non-normative sections. So in terms of how standards go, it's two pages long, it's really short and sweet and to the point. Okay, so one important thing is now, so one nice thing, we broke all these things in all these different streams, we can process them independently, that's great. We can route them independently, that's great. And then we have kind of our lip sync kind of problem. We have to make sure that we can put everything back together and so it stays time aligned, so we don't get any alignment issue. So how do we do that? We're going to use the RTP timestamps. So in, in the streams, there are when, when you create the packets, there's a timestamp that's put in them. By using the video timestamp and the audio timestamp and the auxiliary timestamp, we can now realign everything. So when we, if we need to create SDI, we can then, or, or even any processing you're doing, you can now adjust things and make sure everything lines back up again. So it's one little complication that the standard added all this flexibility, but made it a little more complicated, but we have a, a way to deal with that. Okay, so there's a, um, if you want to look at the packets, be able to, if you're doing any troubleshooting or debugging, um, the, our friends at Fox basically created a plugin for Wireshark. So if you go to that website there, there's a Lua script that you can download. So if, when you install Wireshark, you can install this little plugin. And what it does is when you pull up a, um, a uh, ANC packet, it'll, it'll automatically dissect it for you. So it'll show you here that we have two services in this packet. Uh, we can see that, oh, this came from line number 12, offset of zero. Here's the DID, SDID. So this is a closed captioning stream. And here's the data. And then here's the next one. So this works very nice. For doing analysis, because the ANC services are generally very low data rate, um, it's very easy to say using something like Wireshark, you can capture days and hours worth. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So unlike doing sort of video streams that are 3 gig or 10 gig, um, the ANC packets are very easy to look at. Anyway, so this Wireshark dissector is, is a very handy little tool. Okay. Um, actually, a couple of other things. So in our demonstration over there, we're also showing um, so we have two UHD native streams, and we're actually taking a closed captioning encoder, and we're sort of independently routing them, and then displaying those on the two multi or on one of the multi viewers. So if, if you're looking around the booth here on the first monitor, you'll see a closed captioning, which is a, it's, it's generating sort of a, a description of what what you're seeing here, and it's embedding that onto the monitor. So we're sort of demonstrating this this capability here. So some of the takeaways here. So we have the two standards. So we have the RFC 8331, which tells you how to take your ANC packets and put them into IP. So the one thing is that we're really still taking the stuff that was in your SDI and just sort of transport it. We're not doing a lot different with that. Then we have our 2110-40, and it's basically tying that to the 2110 suite. So you can do your 
lips or your sort of call it lip sync al alignment and how to know how to create the SDPs and all the stuff that's required for the 2110 infrastructure. With the separate essences, so that's one of the core fundamental things of 2110 is breaking things into different streams. And that gives you then that flexibility of routing them and processing them separately. One thing you need to think about when you're creating the streams is which services do you want to put in which streams? So do you want to put everything in one, which then has to be routed together, or do you want to put them all separately? Thinking about the pros and cons of the complexity by having lots of streams versus the benefit of, of, of processing them separately. That which gives us then that, that, that audio breakaway, so it's an ANC breakaway capability. And that you're not going to use this standard for audio, you're going to let the 2110-30 do the audio. Okay, so let's see here. Yeah. So have some questions. We'll, we'll time for questions. Uh, any questions right now? So who wants to uh, try to win the inverter? Or do yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> do we have any, any any question at all? Hi. Could you give some more practical examples of services you could put into the twenty one ten dash forty? Yeah. So it's. So, the, so what I refer to a service, it's really, it's, it's the DID, SDID combination. So it's really, it's everything you have currently in your SDI facility. So some examples of those would be closed captioning. Um, you've got, um, say, things like AFD. You've got um, triggers, so for, diff so for downstream commercial triggering. Um, there's time code. Um, what are some other popular ones? Yes, there's sort of different ones for somebody who's doing some downstream signaling. Um, you could even use it for uh, tally. Tally, yeah, yeah, yeah. So really the thing is, as we're moving to IP, it's really, I mean, from a high-level point of view, you're still doing call it the same, same workflow. So you still have your, your closed captioning, you still have your AFD and stuff. So as we move to IP, we're not really fundamentally changing the services that you have we're just sort of moving them in a different way. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think in early days, people talked about thumbnails in meta, meta ANC streams. Is there any progress, any idea, anyone talking about it still? Um, I haven't heard that too much. I mean, the, the thing about the, the way the standard is written is really you can take any, any service and, and transport it with this mechanism. So I'll say that's sort of a, a separate activity. I mean, if you have a, if you create a thumbnail and put it into a service, then this would allow you to transport it. So it, it's really, it's reasonably agnostic about what the, what the data is. As long as you have a DID, an SDID, you can, it, it does have a line number field for sort of existing services, but also the way the standard was written is we also allowed not having a line numbers. So as we move to the future, and we know that we don't want to necessarily tie things to line numbers as much or have more flexibility, the standard allows that. But if you, had any, yeah, so if you create a new service, which is the thumbnail service, then you can, it just will automatically work with this, the way the standard, so. That's some, some, hey. good, some good questions there. Any other contestants? <laughs> Okay. Well, okay. thank you very much, Lee. Thank uh, you. We appreciate your discussion, and you get to uh, pick the winner. So yes. go ahead. I guess we'll go for the person who answered the question. <laughs> All right. Very good.